Oh sweet, Spotify Wrapped is out. Listen to 38,000 minutes of music. Morning started with intense royal core minimalist. All right. You blacked out 143 times this year. What? You maxed out five credit cards. What, what? You never learned a new language this year even though you said you would. Okay, well yeah, that's because I was busy. False. <laughs> Our data says you have more than enough time to learn new language this year. What, how? Looks like you also cried over your ex for 48 hours, questioned your sexuality nine times, and found five lumps on your body this year. How do you know all of this? Spotify frames data collection as a means of self-expression. Sharing our Spotify wrapped is supposedly enabling us to quantify and express ourselves within society. To present a deep dive into our identity. When Spotify wrapped curates my audio aura, it presents a promise of individuation and the self-overcoming of mass homogeneity. It tells me that I am one of a kind and that I have control over my own identity. Here society is envisioned as a collection of distinct, vibrant individuals. We eagerly accept that every second of activity is measured and stored, and then we use it as a celebration of our empowered individuality, or for social capital. And that's all it is, right? This video essay will explore digital identity and self within the context of Spotify Wrapped. The driving argument is that Spotify presents an imaginary of self-individuation, yet then disempowers digital individuals in several ways. It will discuss the losers individuals in the context of digital enclosures to present how the individual is reduced to data. It will then look at the social power in privatizing this data and how that reveals everyday activity to be an exchange of value, or rather, an appropriation of the self. Spotify Wrapped illuminates multiple dimensions of a control society. In Deleuze's 1992 postscript on societies of control, Deleuze gives his account of a 21st century control society, which we can reimagine in the context of digital spaces. And it is quite frankly terrifying how well it resonates with today. Mark Andrzejewicz suggests that everyday activity is increasingly enfolded into digital space through constant monitoring. Individuals are placed into a digital enclosure where they are redefined as data. Datasets envision individuals through one-dimensional contexts, and so the individual is fractured into categories. In this sense the individual is divisible. Mass society is restructured to be made up of patterns of behavior rather than distinct individuals. Social systems are depersonalized. We therefore interact with machines, like Spotify, as individuals. Through this process social machines render us as an armature of ourselves. A facsimile of a person. We are what we see, say, like, and enact, as a function of external structures. To the bank I am a credit score. To Spotify I am my streams and likes, and the patterns of my activity down to the second. To the NHS, they actually misspelled my name, so I share my health records with an address in Stevenage. I am reduced to a name, address, and genetic risk factors, even if they are not my own. By collating people as datasets, machines superpose the individual onto the individual. They are processes that produce distinctions, and the self is the input. This therefore presents the contradiction of digital self-individuation. The corporate promise of increased access and choice, and therefore self-individuation, simultaneously incites the divisibility of the individual. Where Foucault's disciplinary societies regulate bodies through space, the expansion of digital space leads to the regulation of access in today's societies of control. Being granted access via terms and conditions becomes a stand-in for giving up the self. Digital space extends the reach of corporate entities like Spotify, and compels personal disclosure by rescaling unmonitored consumption into monitored interactive transactions. It's an exchange of labor. There is work in being watched. Lester highlights that this process is still voluntary. It is a tyranny of convenience. We willingly allow our identity to be appropriated and reconfigured as a commodity, because consumption has been aggressively normalized as self-expression. The corporate class interest is diffused into the digital everyday. We click agree, and the repercussions are not made visible to us. All the while, the machine sustains an illusion of a customer's paradise, which presupposes the customer is in control. Who has control in the transaction is key. Spotify is allowing us to view a piece of our data. In this sense our data is not our own. It is presented to us as a nicely packaged narrative of the categories that characterize us. But beneath this there are deeply power-laden exchanges of value taking place. 
Zuboff explores this relationship through the concept of surveillance capitalism. She suggests that human activity is brought into the marketplace and recast as labor. The commodity in this exchange is private human experience. It is aggregated into a prediction product within the behavioral futures marketplace. Moreover, this data is brought into markets through the same logics of private property. Our private cells are privatized. As spatial barriers collapse, we are presented with ever-expanding choice, and therefore the attention we give becomes the scarce commodity. Online consumption, which is perhaps now just operating as an individual in the everyday, becomes a transaction through which value is appropriated from identity. Myself is appropriated into a individual, which draws the borders of my future behavior. To conclude, Spotify presents a narrative that user identity is more preeminent than ever before, yet at the same time it bounds us through narrow contexts. The expansion of digital space is presented alongside self-individuation. Data is imagined as a means of empowerment of the individual. However, the individual is undone in a number of ways. Social machines envision us as individuals. We come into view entirely through the aggregations of the machine. Human experience is aggregated and commodified as data. The privatization of online privacy is detrimental to user empowerment because it is harnessed as a tool of the corporate class interest. Our data is not our own, and so identity is willingly appropriated in an exchange, or rather an exploitation, of value. There is work in being watched as access is traded for self. This then becomes a prediction product, which further dictates and commodifies behavior. Therefore, in our ever-expanding digital enclosure, we are more restricted than ever. Thank you.